Hey, everyone, this is the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast. Thanks for tuning in. To all those who listen regularly, and for those of you who are here for your first episode, welcome. One of our goals is to create a community and a space where everyone feels at home. And one way we do that is that we produce this podcast ourselves so that you all can listen without interruptions and to keep an engaged conversation that's ongoing within our community. Right, right. And for that reason, we only show up on charts based on reviews. So we would love it if you would be so kind, if you feel called to leave a review about whatever you may be loving about this podcast, like Katrina and her hair, or what you would like to hear us discuss. You can do that on whatever podcast platform you use, whether it's Apple or Google or on YouTube, if you happen to be watching us on our Crazy Amazing Humans YouTube channel. Your review also gives context to others who may not have heard of Crazy Amazing Humans, and they may benefit from knowing us. Oh, well, Jefferson, everyone would benefit from knowing you. I know I do. (laughs) Oh, you're the best. Well, that's right. You're the best. And if you're a longtime listener, then you're the best. And then you also know that we've covered people who run the gamut of human experience. For instance, a musician orphaned from birth in Zimbabwe, Africa, Taps Mugadza. Oh, right. That's episode six. Yes. He started a foundation to help an orphanage he grew up in. To Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, Nicholas Kristof. Ah, episode 16. (laughs) Who has championed social causes and raised millions millions and millions of dollars for numerous charities domestically and abroad to Wendy Levine and Lisa Gibbons. Ah, episode 17. Thank you, Jefferson, who both started foundations as a result of a loved one experiencing debilitating illnesses. And so that's our mission, really, to make sure we highlight how people are making the world a better place. And many times by taking challenging situations and finding hope in the midst of it. So on this journey, we want to take you with us so that you and we can all make a difference in our own communities. And in today's episode, we're going to give you hints, skills, and inspire you to become a champion for yourself and those in your world, your friends, your neighbors, your families, people you meet. Yes. And and so here's what we mean by that. A year ago, a lot of family gatherings were put on hold, right, Kat? I mean, yes. Katrina and I have noticed no. that people are saying now that, okay, they're able to go back to school and go back to the office. But many times we we have forgotten how to people, you know what I mean? Like how, <laughs> does, how to socialize or interact. That's right. That's right. I mean, honestly, you can kind of see it on the news that some folks are getting uh, right. pretty hot around the collar, to put it mildly, on like yeah. airplanes and in restaurants and certain stressful situations. It's hard and and it's challenging challenging out there for sure. So we thought maybe you're attending some upcoming holiday gatherings with family, which can be challenging even in the best of times. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. So so this episode's here to equip you to be able to be intentional and mindful and to help steer the overall experience to make sure it can be a positive one for you and your families, those around you. So, you know, it's kind of that idea that we can let life come at us or and just react act to what comes our way, or we can be intentional and and mindful with a purpose on how we're entering a gathering of any kind, holiday or otherwise. But how do we do this, you ask? Well, (laughs) I'm so glad you asked. (laughs) We are very, can you tell, we're very excited to share our conversation with an expert in this arena, Malika Chopra. Now, Malika is a mom, a media entrepreneur, author, and public speaker. Uh, Our conversation will center around one of her many books, and this one's called Living with Intent, My Somewhat Messy Journey, right? I I relate to that. My Somewhat Messy Journey to Purpose, Peace, and Joy. And as a bonus, Malika has very kindly offered to do book giveaways for you, our crazy, amazing humans community. So be sure to follow us on Instagram so you'll know when they're happening. Definitely. And you don't want to miss what Malika has to say in this episode. She is a wealth of knowledge and insight when it comes to discovering purpose, peace, balance, and joy in your life. So let's bring on Malika. I want you to. Crazy, crazy, amazing. 
Today's episode of the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast is brought to you via Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. All episodes are free, so make sure and subscribe today. All right, Crazy Amazing Humans community, we are here with the lovely and wise Malika Chopra. Many of you may already know who Malika is, but for those who don't, here's a little background. Malika has a BA from Brown University, an MBA from Kellogg Business School, and a master's in psychology and education with a mind-body-spirit concentration from Teachers College, Columbia University. First, Malika, have you thought about getting educated? (laughs) (laughs) So I'm very impressed. Malika has acquired insights that she's gained while seeking meaning and balance as a mom and entrepreneur who felt she was overwhelmed by work, family, and too many responsibilities. Who can relate? I relate. Uh, (laughs) Malika has taught meditation to thousands of people and is currently a mindfulness consultant for the animated series Stillwater on Apple TV. Many of you may be watching that. Malika enjoys speaking to audiences around the world about intention, balance, and living a life of purpose. Malika Chopra, welcome to the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast. I'm so thrilled and honored to be here. Thank you. We're so happy to have you with us today. And I'm very grateful for our mutual friend, film producer extraordinaire, Suzanne Todd, who introduced us a few years back, knowing we're both brown grabs, but also that your very talented daughter was looking for someone to produce her music. So as our crazy, amazing humans audience knows that I'm a musician. And so it was really fun for me to connect you with some of my favorite music peeps. You know, artists have to support each other. And we all, yes, we all have to support support each other. So it's always wonderful when friends connect friends. I'm so happy to have made a new friend in you, Malika. And I I just like to say, Katrina, you are the secret angel in our life. Like you really have mentored and helped Tara, my daughter in so many ways. And your entire family is so gracious and warm. And we're very, very grateful. Thank you. We are. It's just amazing that. Thank you. That just made my day. Um, So I also, gosh, I'm so glad I had another connection to you because I remember seeing you on a TED talk where you told a story about when you were speaking to an audience about intent and wellness and balance. And you started having a parallel conversation with yourself in your head, which sounds like something I do. Um, Can you retell that for us? Yeah. So, you know, I grew up in a world surrounded by teachers. Many people are familiar with my father, Deepak Chopra. I learned how to meditate when I was nine. And so, you know, I just turned 50. So I am 40 plus years as a meditator. So you're an expert. (laughs) I am kind of an expert, but I think like many people, I actually am an irregular meditator. I find it when I need to find it. And You know, it's about finding practices at the right time in your life. So I've gone through, I can really look at decades where I've gone through decades where I meditate twice a day, then other decades where I don't meditate at all. And so the story I shared, Katrina, in that talk was, you know, I've been teaching now for 10, 15 years, and I teach many groups of women go into companies, kids, etc. And so I was in front of a group of women talking about finding balance, having healthy habits and lifestyle and the benefits of meditation and mindfulness practice. But as I was speaking, I was thinking, oh, my God, I have to send that note to my investors. I have to get the permission slip to my daughter's school. Why did I just have that double mind? macchiato and chocolate chip cookie before getting on stage. I feel totally sick. And so, yes, there was this like dynamic and I realized, oh my God, here I am telling people what to do and I'm not doing it. So what I did in that moment was I actually asked the audience to close their eyes and take a deep breath and meditate. So I could actually deal with my own drama while I was on stage, <laughs> drink, drink, um, get others. And so they were sitting there smiling, happy, feeling peaceful. And I kind of on stage had this moment of real introspection of thinking, 
like I'm kind of a mess and I really need to get my act together. And even though I had all these skills, I had kind of wavered away from the path. So that got me back thinking about what are the practices, what is intention, going back to many of the lessons I had learned growing up. So, you know, there's a couple of things, Malika, that you said that Katrina and I really gravitate to. First of all, I don't know about you, Katrina, but I want a double macchiato right now. I'm just feeling... (laughs) And a chocolate chip cookie sounds pretty good, uh, I think. This whole idea, yeah, of like not being perfect. Thank you, Malika. Yes, yes. like you feel like people who meditate just have it all together, but we don't always. Especially you, Malika. They must think, oh, she's perfect. And the (laughs) fact that you're honest, don't you think that's really endearing and it makes people feel like... Oh, okay. It's something that, as you say in the subtitle of your book, Living with Intent, it's messy. It's mm-hmm. not perfect. So thank you for being honest with us and in that TED Talk. Now, in your experience, what do you think keeps us from being mindful? You know what I mean? Like what misconceptions do we have about it? Mm-hmm. So I think the first misconception when people think about um, meditation and mindfulness, which are two different things. So meditation is a practice that helps us quiet our mind. Mindfulness is being aware. So being aware of our body, our thoughts, and what's happening around us in our environment. So there's so many practices, and I like to break those down, especially for kids, because it can be really simple. But I think the first misconception is people are like, I can't do it. Like, I can't empty my mind. I can't sit still. And what we're not teaching here is you can't empty your mind actually (laughs) what we're doing is we're settling down our thoughts through different practices or we're being more aware of what's going on with our body how we feel our feelings in our body kids are great at this you know the butterflies in their stomach when they're nervous or the sweaty hands and you know they can feel headaches and anxiety and so these are just practices to help people connect with their body, with their thoughts, and with their environment. And when we do that uh, research now, many years later, when my dad started talking about this stuff, it was considered kind of woo-woo and crazy. But now we know through much research, especially in the last 15 years, the benefits of these practices from physical health, mental health, and even social connection. So, oh gosh, where to start on all of this. And that is very helpful to kind of delineate those two ideas. And so I'm not sure if we're applying mindfulness, I think so to and anything else that you could help equip us with regards to our immediate goal that we mentioned in our opening, which is sort of applying these things to the upcoming holidays that I think our listeners are going to be confronted with, we all are going to be. And because JD and I were talking about how going, that we're both going to our own family gathering where we haven't seen so many people for so long and how we can approach these gatherings, not with trepidation, but rather with kind of like a proactive intention to make them as positive as possible, sort of like a quarterback or something setting a harmonious tone, steering conversations, that kind of thing. Right. You know, so as a quarterback, you said the quarterback. So if I'm the quarterback (laughs) and I have an uncle I don't care for, can I just tell him to go long? (laughs) <laughs> you know, like into the neighbor's house, maybe. Uh, what do you well, think? what I would recommend is that you go. <laughs> you let I go, go right, okay. <laughs> um, A quarterback right. sneak, if you will. Yes. So this is the, I talk a lot about intention. And I do believe that um, intention really grounds us in action. And so I talk about micro intents a lot because sometimes when we think about intention, it just seems too big and overwhelming a thought. So in my book, Living with Intent, I have a path to intent, which we can talk about later. But when it comes to the holidays, and you know, this is a time that actually for many people brings up excitement and gratitude, but a lot of anxiety. And I think even even more so after the pandemic when you know you're really excited to see parents and uncles and cousins but then you're also like oh my god is whether it's politics or what you've been doing for the last two years, or maybe, you know, so many of us have just been at home in sweats all the time. Like you're not even used to self-care. Like, you know, that um, people are going to make comments. So I think what I recommend is spend the next few weeks, even if it's 
five minutes of just getting, finding a practice that grounds you because when we incubate and we're just quiet and we can talk more about that. And I think we'll do a guided meditation. When you carry a sense of peace and quiet with you, you're just better prepared. Then it's setting micro intent. So it's saying, okay, when you wake up that morning, you set an intent that this is how I am going to proceed with my day. And a micro intent could be, I'm going to keep calm in the midst of chaos, or I'm going to focus on gratitude, or when I get overwhelmed, I'm going to step away. Setting that intent in the morning, and what happens is when you do that and you anchor yourself in that micro intention for the day, you will not respond in a fight flight response because then what happens is when you're in a situation with your family, maybe someone makes a comment and immediately you disagree and you're like, oh my God, I knew this was going to happen. And suddenly your heart starts beating faster, your hands start sweating, you get red in the face from anger and frustration. Take a deep breath and remind yourself of the intent you said in that morning and proceed with that action. Micro um, so intense. That's like really that. cool. Hey, so, okay, let, let's, in a broader uh, perspective, because Katrina and I really are fans of your work and we <laughs> love your book, Living with Intense. And you, you lay out four big pillars in that mm -hmm. book. And so what I, what we were hoping we could do is just unpack those four pillars and then maybe even use those to direct it toward the holidays and beyond. So those four pillars for you say are, who am I? What do I want? How can I serve? And what am I grateful for? Correct? Yes. All right. So <laughs> let's 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 take a moment at a time. Can you tell us about the first principle? Who am I? And seriously, who am I? <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> Me neither. The big the big, big question. So you know, part of this process of meditation and mindfulness is connecting with who we really are. Okay, so when you're quiet okay. and you take a deep breath and you connect with that space of the person who is having the breath, the person, the soul that is having experience, you realize that you go beyond labels. So we always start with who am I? Well, I'm a mom. I'm a Brown, a fellow Brown alumni. I am, you know, I can come up with all kinds of labels of what I am. You know, I'm a business entrepreneur. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. But then we start to go deeper and we start to go deeper beyond my name. You know, you can start with I am Malika Chopra. I am Malika. I am and what am I beyond that? And so what meditation and mindfulness practice does is it takes us to a place which is actually helps us feel really secure, helps us feel really at peace, where we realize that we're more than just our labels. We are that presence that has kind of lots of experiences that attaches labels and relationships and accomplishments, but there's a presence there that we carry with us throughout. So, you know, it's really a big philosophical concept, but it's super simple because when we take a deep breath, like right now, just take a deep breath in and out. And what you notice in that space between the in and the out, there's just a sense of peace and connection. And so when I when we talk about who am I um, in you know the Chopra classes and the meditations, that really it's about going beyond the labels. And so we begin with the labels, but through experience, we start to carry that sense of peace and calm with us. Uh, I like that. I feel very relaxed right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and all of that makes a lot of sense. Okay, the next principle is what do I want? So when we were kids, my dad, first of all, my brother and I were the guinea pigs for all of my dad's experiments. So like it started with meditation, but it was everything from playing the Ouija board to memory tricks, um, to visualizations, etc. But one of wow. the things he taught us as a kid was about intention. And so he would ask us um, at a young age, what do you want? And of course, we would ask for tickets to the Celtics, a trip to Hawaii, new clothes, Atari games. There are tons of things that we wanted. <laughs> and he would listen patiently, but then he'd guide us to think about the qualities that we wanted in our life. So connection, inspiration, a sense of purpose, energy, 
healthy, you know, healthy body, healthy mind. And so it was really a shift from asking of the material things to really the qualities that would make us happier, healthier, more connected and of purpose. Yeah. And so when I talk about intention, intention is who we aspire to be as individuals, members of our community, uh, citizens of Mother Earth. Goals come from the mind. They're very tactile and there's an end goal. But with intention and when we think about what we want, it really is more about these qualities that we want. That is really wonderful. Going beyond or below the, the surfacey stuff to really get to the things that matter. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's go to the third pillar, which is, and this is one Katrina and I really gravitate towards too, how can I serve? So, you know, we know even from research, actually, the best way to take care of your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health is actually to serve others. And so many of us know this innately because when we do something for someone else with no expectation of anything in return, we feel full, we feel a purpose. And so this question, how can I serve, has always been a pillar of the work that the Chopra Center uh, has done for decades. But I add, how can I serve myself? And, you know, that really comes from being that kind of moment I talked about on stage where I realized, like, here I am trying to serve everyone, my kids, my parents, my community, my business. And what about myself? Like, I had lost all of the practices from physical, emotional, spiritual practices to take care of myself. And if we don't take care of ourselves, it's really hard to take care of others. So in that service component, I add, how can I serve myself? And then how can I serve my community and my world? You know, I love that because uh, Katrina <laughs> and I talk about the fact that we have to practice self-care. Otherwise, you won't be able to have anything to give. Right. right? And like, yeah, on the, on the airplane, they always say when you're the parent and you've got the child, put your oxygen mask on first before you put on theirs. But as a mother, I honestly want to put on theirs first, but I get it. You're, you're right. We always have to be reminded, you know, how can we serve and serve ourselves so we can serve others? I love that. So going on to your fourth pillar, what am I grateful for? Yes. So again, and it's, I keep mentioning research because when I grew up, we talked about these practices, but everyone thought they were kind of new agey and, you know, mm -hmm. out there. But now even with gratitude, we're seeing so much research on the benefits of gratitude practices, kindness, I would add as well. So gratitude brings us back to the feeling in our bodies. And that's why, you know, we really try to focus when we think about what we're grateful for naturally we feel it in our heart we start to feel you know all of the good hormones and endorphins when we think about what we're grateful for there are the big things that we're grateful for but just like I say micro intense when I'm doing this practice I like to think about what am I grateful for today like just today break it down into something that's really kind of something I'm experiencing right now that's excellent. I really like yeah, that because it's I such do. a huge question. We were talking about what we were grateful for yesterday, weren't we, Jefferson? We were. And you were asking me and I'm like, I'm always starting out with, well, I'm grateful for my health and I'm grateful for, you know, my children and this, you know, all these big things. So if you can, but so those are the things we kind of know, but to take them down to micro intense for gratitude. I love that. That is such a great concept. Mm -hmm, so, so who am I? What do I want? How can I serve? And what am I grateful for? So those are such amazing life changing mm -hmm. principles. Now let's take it back then to our, the immediate goal of let's say the holiday gatherings. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we can take these micro intents? You've already alluded to this mm -hmm. and keeping those big principles in mind, how can we apply those, let's say to the immediate goal of interacting with our family and friends at this holiday season? When we think about who am I, and especially when we go into the holidays, we really start to label ourselves, <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. we start to preach it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we do. Because yeah, we, we all play everything. roles in our families, right? Exactly. I'm the youngest of 11 kids. So I'm like, N -n -n, and I'm like the person who's more of an extrovert. So yeah, you feel like this is who you are. You're always the little, you're always the youngest when you show exactly. up at your family. And you go yeah. back to the way that you react. You mm -hmm. you know, you go back to being the youngest of the 11 kids and everyone treating you that way. Or you go back to the dynamic that you may have with your mom or your dad or your uncle. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually a really important time 
And that's why it's suggested even starting now with a five minute practice so that when you're in the midst of that craziness where, again, someone's talking to you in the way that they always talk to you. And again, physically, you literally go into a fight flight mode that you can take a deep breath and remind yourself that I am more than that label. Like I am more (laughs) than just the youngest of those 11 people. Like, let me connect again with that place inside of me that I can carry with me wherever I am. I love it. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm starting my meditation tomorrow, (laughs) maybe today. So now I'm going to take it a little step further. So with your depth and breadth of knowledge and wisdom, are there any other tools that you like to use or advice you have that we can apply to help us as we get through not just these types of situations, but going forward into the new year as well? Yeah, so first of all, what I love doing is writing and going into classrooms with kids because actually what happens is it helps you articulate things in a really simple way Um, because Mm. kids, you know, when you're explaining to them. And so, you know, when we started this conversation, we talked about like some people are intimidated by meditating or the idea of being mindfulness. So with kids, it's really simple. We just start with a deep breath, like we did together, you know, so that's why I have one book that's just called Just Breathe. Um, And so it really begins with breathing and then we can extend um, from one breath. You know, with kids, we often use our fingers and, you know, tactile is very helpful to like breathing in with your pinky, out with your ring finger, in with your middle finger, out with your pointer finger. So that's two breaths, but it slows us down. It gets us back into a place of calm. So I really am a big believer first in just the power of breath. The power of breath slows us down and gets us more connected. Then I recommend mindfulness in the context of going for a mindful walk. So go for a walk in your neighborhood without all your devices, without kind of feeling like, you know, you need to listen to a podcast when you're going for a run, like actually go and just be quiet. Unless of course you're taking this podcast, (laughs) then you should use a podcast. (laughs) Okay, right. So we're going to be walking and kind of just, are you clearing your mind? Are you... You know, you're just being present. So I like to remind people we are human beings. We're not human doings. And so I think if you. That's really good. I love it. Yeah. If you carry that sense of just being, in fact, I'm just working on, on that Stillwater show and, you know, this concept of like being versus having to do all the time. Um, and so I think as you think about the new year and it's an interesting time because after the pandemic, so much, uh, many of us had to let go of everything we were doing or as parents, you know, over scheduling our kids, like our kids actually just had more time. And so, you know, that has come with both some gifts, but also some difficulties. And so this is, I think, hopefully we're coming out of the pandemic and we're going back to a new life. I don't think we're going back. We don't know what normal is anymore. And so 2022, I think is really going to be a year of self-reflection and asking these questions. Who am I? What do I want? We are seeing this nationally and globally. So many people are not even returning to work. They're redefining what it means to how they spend their days, where they live, what kind of relationships they want. So I actually think 2022 provides such an opportunity for for intention and self-reflection. Wonderful. Well, you said at the top of this episode that you would be willing to guide us and our audience into a meditation, and I think we could all use it. So uh, would you do that for us now? Oh, and promise that you're not going to do a a shopping list in your head while we meditate. (laughs) (laughs) I would love to. And so what I will do is, um, Katrina, you mentioned the I am that we did before. Uh I really like, so I mentioned mindfulness is when we're aware of our thoughts, our breath, our body, and our surroundings. Mm -hmm. I grew up practicing what we call a mantra sound-based meditation. And so I just I just want to explain that really quickly because um, when we understand it, it kind of makes sense what we're doing. So mantra is just a word. Man stands for mind and tra is the root for instrument. 
So when we use that word, it just means an instrument of the mind. And what we're doing is we're using sound, what we call primordial sounds. Primordial sound, we're using sound to settle down our thoughts. So we're not emptying our mind. We're going to have thoughts, but we're just settling down our thoughts. And in this one, we're going to use the words I am. But I just want to explain why I'm using I am. So a primordial sound is like sounds of nature. So you can think of the wind blowing through the trees or the sound of the waves on the ocean or children's laughter. Like there are sounds that make us feel peaceful or happy. And I am is similar to other sounds in the universe. So ama, mama, like it's the infinite uh -huh. to the finite. So I am. Amma, um, uh, mama. In um, our traditions, we have words like om, but think about amen. You know, we see these sounds around cultures all over the world. And so it's the infinite to the finite. So in this one, we're just going to use I am. And what we're going to do, and I'll tell you first, and then I'll, we'll do it together, is in your head mentally, all I do is ask you to repeat the words I am. I am. I am at your own rhythm or pace. It may go faster, it may go smaller, it may sound louder, it may disappear. What's going to happen is you'll say it three, five, ten times, and then your mind's going to wander. You're going to think, oh, I'm hungry. I wonder what I'm going to have for lunch, or I should have gone to the bathroom before I sat here. <laughs> and that's completely normal and natural. It's what our mind wants to do. Totally fine. When you notice that your mind's wandered, just come back to the words, I am. I am. And what happens is naturally it's a flow between thoughts, sensations, images, feelings, physical sensations. I am. And your breath just may slow down and your mind may slow down. And what I like to remind people, whatever is happening right now when you're doing this practice is what your body and mind need. So there may be times when your mind just can't settle down and you're racing and you're having all these thoughts. As long as you just kind of introduce I am when you remember, it just breaks that cycle of thoughts. All right. So sit comfortably. Okay. If you're comfortable, you can close your eyes, but one should only close your eyes if you feel comfortable. And when you close your eyes, you're just taking away other distractions. So before we begin, I just want you to put your feet on the ground beneath you, or if you're sitting in a chair, um, just feel like the stability of the ground or the space beneath you and take a deep breath in and out. And now in your head mentally, I want you to repeat the words, I am. I am. And just continue repeating the words that whatever pace feels normal and natural, breathing normally. And when your attention drifts away from the sounds I am, which it will and is completely normal and natural, and you notice, just come back to the words I am. And I'm just gonna have us sit quietly for just a few seconds. So now you can stop repeating the words I am. And if your eyes are closed, keep them closed. And take a deep breath in and out. And with our eyes closed, I'm actually going to ask those four soul questions that we talked about earlier. Who am I? Who am I? What do I want? What do I really, really want? How can I serve? 
but begin with how can I serve myself? And now, how can I serve my world? Now shift your attention to your heart and ask yourself, what am I grateful for today? What am I grateful for today? And now you can take a deep breath in and out, letting go of, again, any of the sensations, images, feelings, thoughts. These are just the seeds of desire, the intentions that are deep inside of you. And one last breath in and out. And if your eyes were closed, you can gently open your eyes. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a big shift. Are you there, Jefferson? <laughs> I am, but I'm just going to ask Malika to do this with us every day. Can you? <laughs> well, we can play it. We can play it. We can play well, it. And we, we can, just, and you're giving us the skills Malika, now to be able to do it on our own. You. So thank you. What I a said, gift. And that's the, I think that's what I wanted. I kept that I am meditation really short because we're on this podcast, but it's a simple tool. You know, I used to do it in carpool line waiting for my daughter, like when you're sitting there in line or, you know, you can just find, you can do it in the busiest of airports and you find that you can still connect if you wow. just slow down. I'm, I'm glad you said that, by the way, because a lot of people listen to our podcast while they're driving. So please don't close your eyes <laughs> when you do or pull over or yes. pull over. Yes. yes. but And that's why I said, you know, it's a mental technique. So you can close your eyes, you can't close your eyes, but obviously, um, you know, if you can find the, what's lovely about these practices is that if you create the habit of doing them, even five minutes a day, you start to actually yearn them because it really does give you like that moment of silence and connection. And so you'll, you'll find it. I'm a big believer, do what works for you, but um, this is a simple practice. It doesn't have to be intimidating. And, you know, you don't have to ask the questions all the time, but every once in a while, it's okay to ask those questions again. I love it. That was, I, I wasn't expecting that. And I'm like, ah, okay. I don't know how to answer these yet, but I will be. <laughs> There's, and I'm sure. Katrina, I love that you said that because actually you don't need to answer the questions. So we live okay, in a society where we're like, again, the doing, doing, thinking, achieving, goal oriented. This is kind of a shift to just kind of be and live the questions. Okay, I love that. They're changing and they're dynamic and, you know, they're uncertain. That's actually mm -hmm. the beauty of it. Well, here's my yes. I am for the day. I am grateful for the gift <laughs> that you gave us, Malika, yes. today. Thank you, Malika. I am grateful too. And I think we speak for our whole audience to say thank you. We are very grateful for you being here with us today, sharing all of your expertise and knowledge that you've gained over the years and your experiences and it was so much fun and it's just thank you it's it's it just takes you know you're kind of reminding us it just takes a couple minutes to just quiet your mind and recalibrate and kind of feel grounded again I love that I'm feeling that my voice I think has lowered about an octave and <laughs> So. And again, I just want to say thank you. First of all, I just love the title of your podcast because it just celebrates who we are. And then, like I said, Katrina, my entire family is so grateful to you and your family. And so uh, really, you've thank been you. amazing. Well, thank you. And I, I have to say, I'm so grateful for my for, for you all and what you've been in our lives, but also for my kids who I know have been speaking with your older daughter and whatnot. So it's just, it's really fun. I love it's it. I, I, it's a beautiful thing. This is what life's about really. So thank you so much for being on the crazy, amazing humans podcast. Miss Malika Chopra, we adore you. You are crazy. Amazing. You are crazy. Amazing. I want you
Wow. Wow. A big thank you to Malika Chopra for being with us today. That was really helpful. You bet. Yes. And it, it's so true. We can we can let life come at us and just react to what comes our way, or we can be intentional and mindful, live a life that's mindful mm. with a purpose on how we enter in a, into a day, into a situation. Good. Let's recap what we learned. Let's enter these activities with what's coming up in the holidays and beyond with mindfulness, being thankful and yes. being in the moment. How do we keep our families from devolving into a kind of argumentative cliche by being the quarterback, if you will, this holiday season and intentionally directing conversations in healthy and positive ways? Yes to that. And we got to center ourselves to do that. And I think we have some tools now, right? Yes, we do. All right. So if you've enjoyed today's episode and you think it would be meaningful and helpful for someone you know, be a crazy, amazing human and let them know about us. Yes, please. A couple of quick reminders. Make sure to subscribe to the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We've also filmed the podcasts so you can check us out on the Crazy Amazing Humans YouTube channel. And make sure and leave comments. We love to hear what you're thinking. Yes, we do. And most of all, we want to make sure to thank you for being with us. Just remember that every little kindness has the potential to create crazy, amazing human experiences one person at a time. And as always, this week, we want to encourage you to find one thing that you can do to extend kindness and love in the world. I'm Jefferson Denham. And I'm Katrina Carlson. Stay healthy, stay connected, and we will see you next time on the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast. I want you to feel, I want you to feel something crazy, crazy amazing. If you have any questions or comments about today's episode, please make sure to write us at crazyamazinghumans at gmail.com.